everybody welcome back to the youtube channel a great god bless you to you all special blessings on my old subscribers my faithful subscribers if you are a new subscriber welcome into the family if you have not subscribed what are you waiting for go ahead and subscribe i pray that as we go into this message that you are blessed that you are fortified that you are strengthened and that you are uplifted let's get into the word god bless you that's us and so this morning, as we celebrate Pentecost, as we celebrate the, the fall of the Spirit, as we celebrate the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, we're going to be looking today at the wind of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to be reading out of Acts chapter 2. Reading from verses 1 to, to 8 and then 15 to 18. That's Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, and then verses 15 to 18. And we're reading out of the King James Version. Amen. And it says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, hallelujah, or many of us this morning need a suddenly from God. Scripture says, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothen tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams 18 and last and on my servants and on my handmaidens will I pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy amen the wind of the spirit. And just before we go into the word today, we just want to lift up the word before the Lord. Amen. In prayer this morning. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we go into your word, as we seek to break bread this morning, we pray for divine revelation. We pray that as the word goes forth, almighty God, that deliverance will take place, that yokes will be destroyed, that bondages will be broken, that weights will be lifted off of our shoulders, that our atmosphere and our environment will receive a shift in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will demonstrate your power as you demonstrated your power on the day of Pentecost. And that you will move by your spirit, Father God. We pray that there will be an encounter with you. We pray that your glory will fill the atmosphere. 
that your glory will fill the environment and that you will let men know that there is a God in Israel. Be glorified today, God, through this word. Be magnified and be exalted, O King, because though alone our God, you rule and reign in majesty, in power, in dominion, and in might. Hallelujah. The wind of the Spirit. Just before I go there, I just want to acknowledge Minister Gordon, Minister Devon Gordon, thank you so much for being with us today. Amen. The wind of the Spirit. The wind of the Spirit first gets introduced to us through the breath of God. And we're looking at the wind of the spirit today because the Bible says that the Holy Ghost came as a mighty rushing wind. And so, brothers and sisters, this element of the spirit is needed for our lives today. Amen. And so, the breath of God, the wind of the spirit was introduced to us. When God blew into man and man became a living soul. When God blew into man, man received God consciousness as well as self-consciousness. And so ideally, brothers and sisters, one should not be manifesting without the other. You should not have self-consciousness and have no idea of who God is. The very fact that you are breathing and have consciousness of self should let every human being know that there is a God in heaven. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, God blew God consciousness into man. God blew into man. And blue is reflection into man. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we are created in the image and the likeness of God. And so God breathed into man. His likeness is reflection. God concretely stationed his likeness when he breathed into man. God made his habitation with man. Hallelujah. And this is what gives man distinction above all other creatures or above every other element of God's creation because God breathed into him. Hallelujah. And so because God consciousness is in man, nobody can escape their God likeness. Hallelujah. Whatever we choose to do with our God likeness is up to us, but the but the image of God is in is in man. The Bible says that the that the glory of God was in the face of Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, whether we are walking with God or not, whether whether God consciousness is alive or dormant in us, we are carrying around the image of God. Hallelujah. And so the image of God cannot be so marred and cannot be so disfigured that God does not recognize that which belongs to him. Hallelujah. God recognizes you even if you are wrapped up and tied up and tangled in sin. God recognizes you no matter, no matter where you are, no matter the circumstance that you are in. God knows those that are his. God blew into you. And so, brothers and sisters, even if you are in a job day today, that does not take away from God owning what belongs to him. And this morning, I want you to know that God is going to come to collect what, what belongs to him. Hallelujah. He's coming to collect identity is coming to collect every gift and every calling and every level of anointing and it does not matter whether you are saved or not this morning if God has a call on your life 
It is impossible for you to run away from God. It is impossible for you to, to try to outmaneuver God because he is the Lord God. Hallelujah. Isaiah picked it up and said, have ye not known, have ye not heard that the Lord, our God, he is God. It is he that sits upon the circle of the earth, the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. In other words, brothers and sisters, if God is sitting on the circle of the earth, he knows all things and sees all things. And the day is going to come when God is going to come requiring what he deposited in you from the foundations of the world. He's going to come requiring what he has placed down on the inside of you. Listen, because, because the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance, meaning that you don't even have to be saved for God to start pulling on your gift. And so, brothers and sisters, God is coming to collect what belongs to him. Hallelujah. And so where God sits is where his ultimate dominion is. It is where his judgments are passed. It is where the self-existing and majesty of God becomes tangible. And so brothers and sisters, I want you to recognize today, wherever you are, whatever condition that you are in, that God is calling and God is coming to require of you what he has placed on the inside of you from the foundations of the world. It's time for your life to come into order. You may be uh, in, a, in, in a position today that we consider to be a compromising position. You may be in a situation today that is not ideal, but listen, when God begins to come, when the spirit of the Lord begins to move, when God gets ready, everybody has got to go. Everybody has got to come into order. Everybody has got to move. You can be in the bed of fornication this morning and the spirit of the Lord comes beckoning for you to come out of what you are in to get into what he has predetermined and predesigned for you from the foundations of the world. No Nobody can withstand the call of God. Hallelujah. No wonder the Bible says that at the end of the age, everything is going to have to respond to the call of God. The Bible says that when God begins to summon and God begins to call, the Bible says in Revelation 20, 13, that the sea began to give up the dead that were in it and that death and hell were delivered up and the dead that were in it it began to come forth. So no matter how dead you feel this morning, no matter how dead the situation and the circumstance, God can call you out of the greatest mess in your life. God can call you when you're about to take a, a, a gun and shoot yourself. God can call you when you're about to take your own life. God can call you ah, from the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. He called to Jonah out of the well, of, out of the belly of a whale. He called to Jonah, hallelujah, in the belly of a fish. And the fish had to vomit Jonah up, hallelujah. So whatever, whatever is holding you captive today, some of us have wanted to get saved for years. But we are bound up and swallowed up. But whatever has bound you up, whatever is keeping you in captivity, this morning when God begins to call, it has got to, it has got to spew you out. It has got to vomit you up because God is determined that you are going to come into order. Even if he's got to shake up your life, even if he's got to cause people to start walking out of your life, even if he's got to shift and break up uh, your comfort zone and break through everything you think you need and everybody you could rely on. The call of God, hallelujah. The call of God is so strong that God can call you from the foundations of the world. The Bible says that those that were predetermined and predesigned by, by God were called from the foundations of the world. And so, brothers and sisters, 
because the call of God is so strong that the call is echoing through time and space and echoing through generations and the call is landing. The call this morning is landing on your sons and your daughters. The call is landing wherever you are this morning. The call of God, the, the call of God, the beckoning of the spirit, the wooing of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The call, the call has reproduced itself through generation and is landing at your doorstep this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The call of God. And so, brothers and sisters, when God blew into man, he also blew him his dominion and his authority. When God blew into man, he blew in purpose and destiny. Hallelujah. His works, the works of God were done from the foundations of the world. And when God declared that it was finished, everything that God has done or will do is already done. And so, brothers and sisters, once God created, that was it. And so, brothers and sisters, one act of creation set the standard for God and all that would come to him. Hallelujah. And so, we recognize that the breath of God is so strong that God only had to breathe one time and the spirit of the living God was released over the entire human race. When God saw Adam, all of humanity is what God saw. Hallelujah. God looked down the ages and saw every situation and every circumstance, everything that our lives would be caught in. Hallelujah. And that's why nothing surprises God. When God looked at Adam, he saw all of humanity. Hallelujah. He saw everything. He saw all that we are and everything that we would become. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, God knew us from before the foundations of the world. And this is the reason why nobody can take you out of the hands of God. Hallelujah. Nobody can pluck you out of the hands of God. Jesus declared, Father God, that, that those that are his are in his hands. And he has not lost any that are in his hands. And I want you to understand this morning that nobody can pluck you out of the hand of God. It does not matter what people do. It does not matter what people say. It does not matter the plots and the conspiracies. God will not allow anybody to pluck you out of his hands. You are secure in his hands. And I want you to recognize this morning that not even you can take yourself out of the hand of God. When God has his hand on your life, no matter what you do, yes, you may slip and you may fall and you may stumble, but the Bible says that the righteous man falleth seven times and gets back up again. Not even you can take yourself out of the hand of God. Nobody can escape the will and the purpose of God. The purpose of God, the Bible says, stands forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. And so, brothers and sisters, the wind of God was blowing from Genesis. The will of God was from the foundation of creation. The wind of God was blowing through out history. Hallelujah. And so the day came, Bible says that the day of Pentecost was fully come. And the spirit came down as a rushing mighty wind. The breath of God began to do some time travel. Hallelujah. Travel down through generations, rip through the ages. And once more, God began to breathe into man. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says that the rushing mighty wind filled the house that they were in. Hallelujah. And this time when God began to breathe, he breathed out fire. Hallelujah. Bible says that the tongues that were released were tongues that were clothed in fire. Hallelujah. The tongues of fire were released and the spirit and souls of men became set ablaze. Hallelujah. And they began to speak in other tongues. They started to breathe out what was on the inside of them. Hallelujah. The fire that was in them became the fire that came through them. Hallelujah. And this is why you need Holy Ghost and fire. Because fire has got to not only be in us, brothers and sisters, but fire has got to come through us. Hallelujah. And wherever you position the wind of the spirit, wherever you position the fire of God, that is where you are going to get a response. Hallelujah. Nobody touches fire and is casual about it. Nobody it touches fire and there is not a response and so brothers and sisters the bible says that jeremiah did no longer want to preach did not want to prophesy because he was being persecuted and he was being uh, attacked because of the word of god and jeremiah wanted to quit and jeremiah wanted to close his mouth but when he tried to do it bible says that he said he felt like the word of god the wind of God, the spirit of God became like fire that was shut up in his bones. I don't know who among us today wants to abort their purpose and wants to abort their destiny. But every time you think about quitting, every time you think about walking away from God, the fire of the living God begins to ignite in your spirit and the fire becomes unbearable, shut up in your boat and you have to express what God has declared that you have to express in season and out of season the fire of the living God begins to blow and begins to consume and burn up everything that does not look like God, sound like God and act like God the fire came because God is also a refining fire and God comes to purge and God comes to purify and God comes to refine and to remove every trust and to remove everything that will cause us not to come out as pure gold. And so, yes, they were uh, baptized in the spirit, but when the fire began to fall, it not only burned up the enemy and burned up situation and circumstances and obstacles, but it began to burn on the inside to purify motives, to purify vision, to purify the act of men. God began to release his fire. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost had to be presented by fire. Hallelujah. God had to breathe this time and breathe into man like as a fire. Why? Because fire represents the final judgment of Satan. So every time Ah, the fire of the spirit begins to blow. He is reminded of his destruction. Every time you go into the realm of the spirit and begin to release the spirit of God on the inside, Satan becomes very nervous because he is reminded of his, in, uh, his judgment that is imminent, his judgment that is about to come. That's why you've got to, you've got to always be charged up in your spirit. That's why you've got to accommodate the spirit of God. That's why you've got to always stir up the gift of God that is on the inside of you. This is why God detests lukewarmness and coldness because where there is no fire, there is no judgment for the enemy. When there is no fire, there is no place for the enemy to go under. The, the kingdom of darkness cannot be overruled and cannot be overturned in this season without fire. And so, brothers and sisters, we have all got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. And as it fell on the day of Pentecost, we have got to go into the presence of God and ask God for a fresh outpouring, a fresh wind of his spirit, a fresh uh, declaration and demonstration of his power in our lives. When we look at 
the disciples and the apostles, they had more than one incident of a fresh outpouring of the Spirit of God. The Bible records where they were refilled with the Spirit. Why? Because they need that refilling. They need that refueling. They need that fresh outpouring. Because if they were going to conquer, if you are going to conquer sin, if you are going to conquer the things that are opposing your life, you need the Holy Ghost and you need fire. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, when the spirit began to blow, it blew back God consciousness into man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the spirit begins to blow, it causes our spiritual senses to come alive. Hallelujah. When the spirit begins to blow, a wind of change is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the wind began to blow on the day of Pentecost, God was blowing down the dispensation of law and ushering in the dispensation of grace. Hallelujah. The wind was blowing the minds of the people that were present because the wind was reordering and restructuring thought patterns and ideas of God. And this is why you need the spirit, brothers and sisters, because God wants to come in and magnify himself in our lives. God wants to change our idea of who he is. God wants to redirect and re and re uh, reconstruct our thought patterns and our ideas of him. And so we need the Holy Ghost to expand our thoughts, to give us the, the divine revelation that we need to walk in. Hallelujah. The wind of the spirit began to pass by the minds of men and took them into a place in God that they had never been before. The wind of the spirit began to usher them into a dimension where their flesh had no control. And so, brothers and sisters, if you're going to walk with God, you've got to die to your flesh and you've got to die to a desire to be in control. That's why when some of us fall under the spirit of the Lord, we go ah, uh, and we fall on the floor. We lose our dignity in the presence of God because our flesh is no longer in control. The glory of God wants to visit the church, but the flesh is in control. Religion is in control. Everything else but God is in control. And if we're going to see a visitation in our days, we have got to die to our flesh. We have got to humble ourselves before the Lord. We have got to get on our faces before God and allow the spirit of the Lord to come in and to take charge. Allow uh, the spirit of the Lord to come in to and to direct our path, allow the spirit of the Lord to break the power of tradition, to break the power uh, of prejudice among us as believers and to make us one and to break down divisions and strife and envy and jealousy among us. We need the spirit of the living God to break every negative cycle. We need the power and the spirit of the living God to come and to usher us into the glory of God. Hallelujah. When the spirit began to blow, the atmospheric heavens were shifted and everything blocking breakthrough. Everything that was in that second heaven, hallelujah, where the devil and his demons reside had to give way, had to shift out of place. Hallelujah. Everything had to flee at the presence of God. The book of Revelation tells us that when the, the last days come and God begins to judge the earth, uh, that the heaven and the earth are going to flee from the living God. I want to say to you today that when the glory of God falls on your life, when the spirit of God comes, God is not just trying to get you to jump and to shout and to speak.
speak in an heavenly language, God is trying to shift the atmosphere, to shift the environment, to cause the atmospheric heavens to shift, to accommodate his glory, to accommodate your breakthrough, to accommodate your deliverance. But you've got to allow the spirit to come and you've got to understand that there is greater levels and greater dimensions of God, that God is about to unfold in the days that we live in, that the glory of the Lord must fill the earth as the waters cover the sea, that the power of the living God must be demonstrated in the earth. Mighty God, like we have never seen before, that God wants to rip the heavens open. Ah, he wants to rend the heavens and come down in his glory. He wants to shower down his power, his might, and his majesty upon us. We have to become conduits. We have to become doors. We have to become channels of the glory of God in the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants the glory to fill your house, to fill your community, to fill your atmosphere. He wants the glory to reside to the point where glory can touch your bloodline. Glory can touch your generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants the wind of the spirit to blow and when it blows, all that comes into your life, all that comes into your community, all that comes into your family, all that comes into your bloodline and everybody in the bloodline begins to line up with the plans and the purposes of God that everything that is out of order, everything that is out of alignment with the will of God begins to give way because the wind also blows away the shaft, the rubbish, the things that have nothing to do with destiny and purpose. And when the wind of God begins to be released in your life, God is going to blow away the people, blow away the situations, blow away circumstances that are distracting you from purpose. And so when they begin to walk away, don't you start crying. Understand that it is the wind of God that has gotten into your life. It is the spirit of God that has come in to blow out every contrariness out of your life, to blow out every dualism in your life, to blow out everything that is in the way of your spiritual progress, to blow away everything and everybody that does not line up with your purpose and with your destiny. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us that the spirit of the Lord came with might, a mighty rushing weight. Hallelujah. The spirit came with force from heaven. And so brothers and sisters, the might of the spirit or the might of God is expressed in signs and wonders. Many of us received the spirit, but did not tap into the might of God. Hallelujah. It's time for us to tap into the might of God. Hallelujah. We have got to stir up the might of God because the days that we are living in demand a demonstration of the might of God in the earth. We cannot just be declaring words and preaching, but we have got to demonstrate the power of the kingdom of the living God. The might of God has got to be expressed in the earth. Hallelujah. Demonic spirits have got to be cast out with the finger of God. We have got to get to the place where we are able to call down the fire of God. Jesus said, I saw Satan and fall from heaven like lightning. The devil has fallen and is in the earth and penetrating world systems and having dominance in the earth. And if we're going to push back the kingdom of darkness, we need the might of heaven. We need the might of the spirit. We need to enforce the kingdom of the living God so that the glory of the living God can be revealed in the earth. The might of God, brothers and sisters, have, has got to be stirred up out of our bellies, out of your belly. The Bible says that if you believe, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living 
living water. And one of those rivers is the river of might. There must be signs and wonders that follow you as a believer. In his name, you should be able to cast out devils. In his name, you should lay your hands on the sick and they must recover. In his name, you must be able to work a sign and a wonder. Hallelujah. The might of God. Hallelujah. So we've got to express the might of God because the wind of God also announces a time of war. When the wind comes and announces that ah, it is a time of war, it means that God is going before you in battle and he's about to blow away your opposition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the whirlwind of God and that God will send a whirlwind against the opposers of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so brothers and sisters, God will send a whirlwind against your opposition, against your opposers. So when you go and you, you feel the spirit of God and God begins to manifest himself, understand that you can channel the spirit of the living God and command the wind of God to begin to manifest and direct the wind to blow off. Ah, in the direction of the oppression that you are feeling and the whirlwind of God will be produced and every opposition has got to flee. Hallelujah. The wind of God carries with it deliverance and breakthrough. When the children of God were at the Red Sea, the Bible says that God sent a strong east wind and he blew back the Red Sea, hallelujah. And if you're in a impossible situation this morning, you don't know how you are gonna get on the other side of whatever you are contending with. I want you to recognize that when the wind of God comes, it blows back every Red Sea that is in your life. God is about to blow back every obstacle and blow back every eye wall and blow back everything that stands in the way of your progress. The Bible says that God blew back the, he blew back the Red Sea and they were able to make their escape. And so brothers and sisters, even if you feel trapped this morning, if you feel like you're in a prison, when the wind of God begins to blow, it is going to break through barriers, burst through walls, break down limitations, break down everything that has you captive and God is going to give you a breakthrough and he's going to give you deliverance so the next time you feel the spirit of God begin to declare your deliverance begin to declare your breakthrough hallelujah your provision is in the wind hallelujah the Bible says that when the children of Israel began to call out to Moses because they were hungry. The Bible says that God caused the wind to begin to blow in Numbers 11. And the Bible says that quail or fish was produced through the wind. And so brothers and sisters, your provision is in the wind of God. You've got to call on the living God and allow the wind to begin to blow in your direction. The Bible says that God has given us all things in the spirit that pertain unto life and unto peace. And if it pertains unto life, it means that it pertains unto your well-being. And so brothers and sisters, you have got to get into the place where you begin to access the provision of God through the wind of the spirit, hallelujah, that you allow the wind of God to begin to blow in your direction until your needs are being met. God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above anything that you could ever think or ask.
asked this morning and he just wants to be able to blow his provision in your direction and so brothers and sisters all you've got to do is get into the realm of the spirit and begin to call out the provision of God begin to call out him as Jehovah Jireh the one who supplies every need according to his riches in glory also want you to recognize that the power of resurrection was in the wind of the spirit when it was poured out on the day of Pentecost because I want you to recognize in Acts chapter 1 the disciples saw Jesus ascend into heaven hallelujah Bible says that they began to gaze up into the heavens hallelujah and they were then given instructions to go to Jerusalem and get into an upper room and await the visitation of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So surely, brothers and sisters, if they did not see Jesus resurrected and ascending into heaven, the, the, the outpouring of the Spirit would have been the sign because now Jesus was about to dwell in their hearts individually and collectively. What Jesus could not do in his human form or in his physical body, he was now able to do because he was now in the spirit. And so brothers and sisters, the outpouring of the spirit also symbolized the resurrection power of God. The wind of Pentecost came and confirmed to believers that Jesus was resurrected, confirm to the onlookers that Jesus was resurrected, that the power and the glory and the weight of God was about to be manifested in the earth. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, you have to learn how to call out to the resurrecting power of the living God concerning your life. When we look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel was in the valley of dry bones. The Bible declares that the, that the bones were very dry. And the, and the Bible says that God asked him then, can these bones live? Ezekiel said, Lord, thou knowest. The Bible says that God instructed Ezekiel to begin to prophesy. Hallelujah. Ezekiel began to prophesy to the wind. Prophesy to the wind of the spirit. And the wind of the spirit began to blow. And that which was dead became alive. And so, brothers and sisters, you've got to learn to take the dead thing. The thing that people have written off. The thing that has been buried six feet under, the thing that people think has, has no possibility of being raised again, you've got to take it into the presence of the living God. And you've got to get in the spirit and begin to prophesy. You've got to call on the wind of God and call on the resurrecting power of the living God and begin to prophesy, begin to call those things that be not as though they were. Begin to declare the word of God out of your mouth and declare that you shall live and you shall not die. The woman whose son was dead, ah, uh, when her son died, the Bible says that when it was inquired of her by Elijah, if she was okay, she declared that it was well and she carried the dead boy into the wind of God the presence of God and the prophetic began to lay on that which was dead. And the prophetic began to make room and the prophetic came alive and Elijah's mentor began to speak life back into this boy. And today, brothers and sisters, you've got to learn how to, how to put, the, put the presence of God the spirit of God, you've got to learn how to lay the presence and the spirit of God over whatever is dead in your life and begin to declare the word of God by divine revelation. Begin to declare the power and the presence of God by divine revelation. 
begin to declare the resurrecting power of the living God. And so, brothers and sisters, Pentecost is the feast of the hope and heaven because it's a feast of divine revelation. It is the feast of harvest. It is also the feast of signs and wonders. And so, as you go out today, as you go about your business, I want you to recognize that the spirit of God that you carry, you carry the might of God. You carry the dunamis of God on the inside of you. You carry the power of God. And you have a responsibility to stir up the power of God on the inside. You have a responsibility to charge your spirit and to cause the wind of God to begin to blow against your opposition, to blow and bring order into your life, to blow and blast the heavens open so that the glory of God can be revealed in you and through you. And so, brothers and sisters, as we are in Pentecost and the heavens are open over our heads, it's my prayer this morning that your strength and your youth is renewed like the eagle, that the power and the presence of God becomes demonstrated in your life, that you will walk in his glory, that you will begin to stir up the gifts of God that are in you, that you will begin to stir up your mantle and stir up your assignments and stir up your calling in God, and that you will be shifted to a whole other dimension in the realm of the spirit, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so as we close out on the word today, we are going to pray. But I just want to take the time out to call to those that were chosen in Christ Jesus, chosen in God, from before the foundations of the world. You who God foreknew and forecalled to come into purpose. You are not saved, but God has called you from the foundations of the world. You are running away from God, running away from your purpose, running away from your destiny. But God has called you from the foundations of the world. And he is commissioning your spirit to come into alignment with his perfect will. And so I invite you today to surrender all to God. I invite you to come out of darkness into his marvelous light. I invite you to come into a place of repentance, a place of transformation, a place of healing and deliverance, where God is going to take control of your life and you're gonna start your walk with God and you will surrender all to him, amen. And so we're gonna be praying at this moment Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every person who has decided to start their walk with you. We thank you. We celebrate those that are birthed into the kingdom. We celebrate those, mighty God, who have made a decision to make you Lord and Savior of their lives. We pray, Father God, as you have kept them thus far, that you keep them as the apple of your eye, that you sustain them, that you be their rock and their shield and their shelter, that you will baptize them with your spirit, that you will cause them to come into a life-transforming encounter 
in your presence. And as we go out today on the day of Pentecost, we ask, Father God, that the heavens will be continuously open over our heads. We ask, God, that you will help us to stir up the gift of God that is on the inside of us. We pray for a, a refreshing in your presence. We pray that you will baptize us one more time with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We pray, mighty God, that you will renew our strength and our youth like the eagle. We ask that your glory will reside upon us like never before. We pray that the wind of God will blow away every shaft, that the wind of God will blow away every opposition, that the wind of God will blow away every obstacle and that we will come to a place of deliverance and breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that the whirlwind of God will be released against our oppressors and our opposers today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray today, God, that the wind will begin to bring order into our lives and to blow away every stranger and everything that does not line up with your will and your purpose for our lives. We pray, mighty God, that the wind of heaven will bring transformation to our lives, our families, our dwelling places, our communities, and our nation's mighty God. We pray that your glory will reside and that you will become stationary in our lives and that we will never be the same. We glorify your name today, God. We magnify you and we exalt you. We honor you, God, in the matchless name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor today. Hallelujah. Because you are great. Hallelujah. Greatly to be praised, to be worshipped, and to be adored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.